Welcome again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 3, verses 21 to 31. The Trinity of the Torah. No, I'm not talking about the Trinity of God as taught in a lot of churches today. You know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm talking about what Paul gets into here in this passage. There is a trinity of the Torah that he touches on here. Now, one thing you got to realize is this. What Paul writes in many parts of his letters is hard to understand. As I read this, you might think, you know, what in the world does that mean? And don't feel alone if you feel like that. Because, you know, even the apostle Peter himself said, Paul is hard to understand. But consider this. The Apostle Peter is one of the closest men to the Lord. He was part of the original 12. Paul wasn't. He was part of the inner circle of the 12. I mean, there were a few places that Jesus would not allow all of his 12 disciples to go to with him. Only Peter, James, and John. So Peter was one of the inner circle. One of the men who really knew more about the Lord than anybody else. So Peter says, hey, listen. What Paul wrote here, it's hard to understand, and a lot of people twist it to their own destruction. And if you read the context of that, that's in 2 Peter chapter 3, the context is about sin, righteousness, you know, living right, being spotless, living spotless and blameless before God. And that's what we're having today. We have so many people today who take the letters of Paul, take the verses of Paul, and use that to condone their own little secret sins. Use that to excuse their own little secret sins. Oh, they say we don't have to go by the law no more. Oh, they say, you know, the, the Old Testament is, is, is irrelevant. They say, oh, it's not by works anymore. It's only by faith and by grace. Hey, listen, these people don't have a clue what they're talking about. But in this session, we're going to tackle one of those things because this passage is one of the passages that a lot of Christians use to justify their erroneous doctrine. Now, this is talking about what I call the Trinity of the Torah. There are three main subjects that Paul is dealing with here. Number one is the written Torah, the written word of God, the written law of God. Number two is the law of God, the word of God in human form, in the form of Jesus. Don't forget John chapter one, verse one. In the beginning, John says, was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So we have a word apart from God, but yet the word is God. Okay. This is what Paul's talking about here. Let's get into it. But now apart from the law, Apart from the Torah, a righteousness of God has been revealed, being testified by the law. The Torah testifies about it. And the prophets. Significant to understand, this is not against Torah. This is not anti-Torah. This is not saying throwing Torah away. This is saying that the Torah actually testifies about this. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all those who believe. We have the written Torah and the righteousness that we see in that. And we have the human Torah. Jesus is the word in the flesh. Most Christians would say that. Jesus is the word of God that became flesh. John chapter 1 verse 1, John chapter 1 verse 14. Jesus was the word of God who became flesh. What did John mean when he sat down and wrote, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and then he said the Word became flesh. What was considered to be the Word of God back in those days? The Torah. If anything, it would have been the Torah. Jesus himself said to the Pharisees, you search the Scriptures. Obviously, including the Torah, you search the Torah. You think that in them, in, in the Torah, in the written Torah alone, just in those written words, you have life. But you don't realize that that written Torah is all about me. All about me. Jesus is the Torah personified. So if you want to know Jesus better, read the Torah. The Torah is Jesus in written form. Jesus is the Torah in human form. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. 
okay? Kind of like two different apart from God, but yet the word it was God. So here we got the same kind of thing happening. We got the same kind of principle happening here. Paul is talking about the righteousness, that is the state of being right and justified in God's sight in the form of the written Torah and apart from that in the form of the personified human Torah, Jesus Christ, okay? They don't clash. They are not against one another. They actually testify of one another and actually they are one. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Just a little side note here. If you haven't listened to the previous session, Can Anyone Be Righteous? You need to listen to that because we talk about all of this stuff there. Okay? When it says all have sinned, it's not talking about universally, absolutely, everybody, everywhere at all times. Okay? It's talking about in general, everybody has sinned. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, Mashiach Yeshua, whom God sent to be an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood for a demonstration, important word there, of his righteousness through the passing over of prior sins in God's forbearance to demonstrate, here we go again, demonstrate his righteousness at this present time. Demonstration. We need to demonstrate the righteousness of God. Jesus even taught that, that he might himself be just and the justifier of him who has faith in Jesus. So what was the demonstration of the righteousness of Christ. Jesus humbled himself to the utmost to obey his Father, to say, not my will, but your will be done, to walk down that Via Dolorosa, to endure the beating, the whipping, the scourging. The scripture says they plowed his back like a farmer's field. They ripped him apart. They tore his beard off, as it says in Isaiah. And it says that he wasn't even recognizable. He hung on the cross, completely naked, completely humiliated, in great pain and agony. This is how the righteousness of Christ is fulfilled. This is how it can be fulfilled in us. It says in the scriptures, we must follow in his footsteps. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. Paul says later on in one of his letters that we must take the attitude of Christ on that Via Dolorosa, the attitude of humility and obedience. Obedience. Humility without obedience is vain. Just like how James says that faith without works is dead. I guarantee you, dead faith cannot take you to heaven. Where then is boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? Of works? No. But by the law of faith. We maintain, therefore, that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. You need to understand what that term, the works of the law, means. It's talking about what the law does in and of itself. If you haven't checked out that session, the works of the law, you must check it out. I can't go into all of it right now, but you need to hear that teaching if you haven't. Or is God the God of the Jews only? Isn't he the God of Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since indeed there is one God who will justify the circumcised, that's the Jews, by faith, and the uncircumcised, talking about the Gentiles, through faith. This is the kicker. Do we then nullify the law through faith? Do we nullify the law through faith? Do we say, you know what? Oh, the Torah, you know, it's fulfilled. It's done with. That's past. You know, that's Old Testament. Now we go by faith. Do you realize what Paul is talking about here is right from the Torah? The whole idea of the word of faith in your mouth is from Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to get into that later in one of Paul's other epistles. When Paul quoted that himself. 
He quoted right from the book of Deuteronomy. Do you think that the Torah is against itself? Do you think that God is fighting against himself in the days of Moshe, in the days of Moses? Do we nullify the law through faith? May it never be. No, haha, <laughs> get this. We establish the law. Thank you, Paul, for that. We establish Torah in this time, in this day, post-resurrection, post-ascension. We establish Torah, and this is, by the way, Mr. Christian, in your so-called New Testament. We establish the law. And yes, if I could say something to Peter, I would say, you know what? You are absolutely right. What Paul writes is very hard to understand. And many people have understood it, misinterpreted it, and made it into something that is a license to sin or just a license to overlook sin. That is a tragedy. Don't allow anybody to convince you of such heresy. And so here we have it, the trinity of the Torah. Number one, the Torah in writing. Paul cited this in verse 21 when he said, there's a righteousness of God apart from the law, apart from the written Torah, being witnessed by the law, by the written Torah. Number two, the Torah in Messiah, the Torah in Jesus. And Paul cited this in the next verse, verse 22, when he cited Jesus Christ as a source of righteousness that is not literally the written Torah, apart from the written Torah. Don't forget that Jesus is the Word made flesh. He is the Torah in the flesh. He is the personified Torah. He is the human form of Torah. The Torah of Moses incarnated. And number three, the Torah in you. Paul cited this form of Torah in verse 31 when he said, do we make void the law through faith? Do we make void the written Torah through faith? May it never be. Rather, we establish the law. We establish the written Torah. As the Torah is established in you, you are to become a human fulfillment of the written Torah. In the life of Paul, there are two main pivotal points. Number one, of course, is his born-again experience on the road to Damascus. Number two is when he was confronted head-on by the original apostles themselves in Acts chapter 21. He was confronted head-on. Paul, listen, we hear rumor that some people think you're teaching against Torah, that you're telling people to forsake Moses. And you need to make sure that they understand that's not what you mean. And he did everything in his power in Acts chapter 21 to ensure that that point was made, that he's not talking about forsaking Moses. He's not talking about forsaking Torah. He's not talking against the law. Most scholars agree. The book of Romans and the book of Galatians, two of the primary books that people use to come against Torah, was written before Acts chapter 21. After Paul got that stern rebuke and warning from the apostles, from his authority in Acts chapter 21, he changed his tone quite drastically. Consider the later epistles of Paul, such as the epistles of Timothy. He doesn't say anything about grace versus works, law versus faith, and on and on and on that goes. He doesn't say anything like that at all. He learned his lesson. And coming up is Romans chapter 4 in our next session. It is going to be awesome. Until then, seek God with all your heart. And I guarantee you, if you do, you will find him. It will be a glorious thing. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.